finish things off with my TV oscilloscope. I got it to work finally with the push pull amplifier, which I I just got the tra transistor soldered into there. You know, on copper tape, I took two strips of copper tape, taped it into the cardboard, then then soldered the transistors on there. It was pretty easy since the transistors pin out had the emitter and base on the two sides, not the center. The center is a collector. So the two sides can share, can connect to each other. Since bases go on a push pull goes to this bases go to base and then the middles go to the middles. They all tie together like that. Anyway what you'll want is a, also a resistor to go in series with your base. Because you put your power to it, it's just gonna draw too much current on the base and it could go over the limits and stress it out and break it. So in order in order to, to uh, do that, you put a resistor there. I also put a variable resistance series of it, just in case if you wanted to to adjust the impedance on it. Because the impedance uh, may be too low for your circuit you're trying to measure, and that may cause it to act up. So we're going to try to get the most of the impedances out of it. Anyway, you can see there it's smaller than it was last time. That's because I turned it down. If you turn it up also, the waveform will kind of blurry here, but the waveform will look like it. See, there it is. And you can see that where it bends a little bit on the top edge and the bottom edge. Then looking like that, like it was earlier. That's because there's some distortion on there from having it too much, too low resistance on it. It's called biasing the, the transistors. If you vary it, you can get it better, looking better. And right now, I'm on, on sawtooth signal with a waveform of 31 hertz. Let's feed it into this 24 volt transformer that produces our AC alternating current. I also put a switch here where that. Uh, that goes in parallel with a 100 nanofarad capacitor that that lets you choose if you want AC coupling or DC coupling on your signals. See. If we turn it down, you can start seeing it. it's starting to look much more like this. If we compare it, Let's see if I can get a hold of this face of paper, we'll put it right there. Since it's not going to go that way, it could go that way if I put another transistor that way on there. But you, but you can do it without having two transistors on, on the solid tooth input. Because the thing is, it doesn't have to go negative. If you want it to use half the screen, you, you can display the signal that you can. Because there's no such thing as negative time. They just put that there just so you can stretch it across the screen and so you can see it better. Anyway, if I start taking this turn the knob down and turn it down there, see, it starts to look more like a sine wave. Like the, what's on this paper there. I decided to point that out to show you what the sine wave looks like, just in case you didn't know what it looks like. It's, it's basically, basically a sine wave. It's basically what it comes out of the wall outlet, except it's higher power. It's like 120 volts on it. But I have a transformer here that steps it down to 24 volts. It's way down below 120. And before I had it power with, with, with resistor on it, 110 ohm resistor, power one. I don't know what the wattage was, but it's a good, pretty good wattage. It's a big size resistor, but it got a, little, got a little high. But that was the old way I had it. And it and it wouldn't do very well for some circuits to try to measure signals in, because if you draw a lot of sig current on it, it could actually cause that circuit to act up.
This here is with that pot in there, go up to one meg or more of your penis. If, if the current and voltage is high enough, the voltage is high enough, I mean, probably. And the current, probably, depending on if it's, depending on how low well the current's been limited with it. Anyway, here I'll show you the circuit diagram that I just designed today on the computer of it. Here it is, not very much to it. Let's zoom in so you can see that. Hope you can read that there. There's a 12 volt power supply. It should, uh, I think you want two amps on it. Not for sure. Don't want one. Well, you, well, if it's switching power supply, you draw too much on it. It'll pulse the, the the DC output will pulse and it will not help when the signal the really mess the signals up on the oscilloscope screen output anyway. But let's see. I'll show you how I did it. So it's a 12 volt power supply there. Put two resistors here. Same resistance in it. The 20 ohms. They don't have to be 20 ohms. Just that low resistance, the more screen it uses, and more, much more better. But too low resistance can break the track of power supply. And also harm the transistors if it's too low. But 20 ohms, I got away with that. Then I put right there in series with the, with this here is where the push pole is. You see there's two transistors here, and see us like I was talking before, the bases go to bases, go to bases. The two middles tied together. Then there's a coil there. There's a coil that goes around the picture tube. There's two coils actually. There's a horizontal coil and there's a vertical coil. You must disconnect both of them from the TV circuit for the thing to work. This goes to the vertical coil on there. 10k resistor there in series of a one meg ohm potentiometer. Then there's our coupling switch with a capacitor on the 100 nanofarad. That lets you choose between between uh, AC coupling or DC coupling. Why did we put a capacitor there? It's because 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 AC coupling is blocking the DC. What blocks DC? A capacitor. And the signal input goes right to J1, right there. And that's where basically it connects into. Right there we have, have sawtooth input, and it goes to just 10K resistor. It, these resistors don't have to be 10K. They could be at least 100K or higher. But preferably not too high. I decided to put 10k on it because I had a lot. I I decided if I if I should uh, be best just since I had that one on there. I could have probably went lower. It just depends on what, what your beta or transistors and stuff like that. Usually those resistors don't really matter. But that's why you should vary them just in case. In fact, on this one here, you could if if it doesn't work right, you don't. Well, actually, it wouldn't matter because you should adjust the amplitude, which I do. If I because watch this, if I go full blast, you can see the waveform just acted up. Can hardly tell so if a sine wave now on this fall on the solid tooth being full blast. This here is just a regular single transistor amplifier that that makes that replicates the signal going into it. Sawtooth. And there you have it. I tried doing it for JFET, and I think for the reason why it broke with the JFET was because JFET amp, uh, not JFET, because JFET didn't make such things. JFET and a transistor, JFET and op amp, and. It broke because 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 the output the input voltage was was plus or minus it had to be what was it, plus or minus 12, uh, 12 15 I can't remember what it was anyway 
they had a different initial voltage it made, uh, it made success on, but not the uh, input voltage. And that's where it went. Also, I was reading on the for the more on the data sheet. It said something about saying that all this that the negative input, negative input cannot reach. I don't know. Anyway, negative input basically. Probably, uh, I don't know what they, if they mean the negative power rail of off op amp or the or a negative terminal on the op amp itself that's for amplifying it. Because there's a negative on the, there's two inputs on it. There's a positive input, which they call non inverting. Maybe, probably because they didn't call it inverting or inverting, if I call it the negative supply. Yeah, that's what they said. So, so, so it had something to do with that. And it probably went over 12 volts. In fact, it did. Because it's 24 volts I was putting into it. But I like this one way anyway. Better. It's simple. It doesn't... It uses discrete... Discrete components that you don't have to... Have to put a chip in there. Like I like, I like it this way. Even though it doesn't have the best impedance, like it would without off amp, but that's basically how it's gonna work. Well, and I'll be show you show you some other frequencies we can do here. You can try it with triangle wave, like like I did before in my first one. I did it had triangle, and that was the only waveform it had. But it looks weird. But you know the reason why the other way didn't, didn't do that was because I did the duty cycle. If you adjust the duty cycle on the triangle wave, you can actually turn it into a soft tooth. Soft tooth is what you want. And that's about it. I had to take it aside because I was going to make a video outside, but the uh, son of something was getting, was making a screen so bright you can't even hardly see what these trace these waveforms were. You can make the waveform bigger or smaller depending on how much load you want to put on your circuit. Some circuits it might be too small to, a too small of a waveform to do it with. To read, but anyway, well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you like it.